Hello, and welcome back to the official United States podcast. Today, we have prepared a massive discussion between the notorious Federalists, Alexander Hamilton and James Madison, against the even more notorious anti-Federalist, Thomas Jefferson, and myself, Samuel Adams. Hello, I'm Alexander Hamilton. Today, we'll be discussing the issues of our new nation's government and the origin of power. The Federalist team supports the ratification of this new constitution, whereas the Anti-Federalists want to maintain the Articles of Confederation. Let's start off with some background from both sides, from both James Madison and Samuel Adams. My great pal Alexander Hamilton and I, James Madison, believe that the Constitution needs to be ratified for the benefits of our great new nation. We are all intelligent men, and we were all present at the Constitutional Convention when we wrote the Declaration of Independence. We have seen and been through a lot, and our views have changed. What might have seemed like a good idea in the past is not applicable today. As such, we absolutely must ratify this Constitution. Now me, Samuel Adams, and Thomas Jefferson were anti-federalists. We oppose the new Constitution as we believe it may infringe on our freedoms we fought hard to secure just a couple years ago. If we make a strong federal government now, what's so different than the tyrannous rule of King George III? We need the rights of the people to be insured, not overpowered by a corrupt government like before. I, Thomas Jefferson, agree. We must remain essentially a sovereign states, retaining the Articles of Confederation. Interstate trade and travel can continue, but we have fought too hard and too long to bow down to another overbearing, power-hungry government. We have seen with Great Britain that power goes straight to the heads of a centralized government. Remaining separate entities and forming a tight allegiance and pact of friendship, both defense and economic support, is the most beneficial for everyone involved. As we have seen over the past 10 years, our country is completely unprepared to lead the world as a modern republic. We are only a loose collection of states with little to no overhead deciding our course of action. As such, we need a strong document like our proposed constitution to be ratified and approved to keep from descending into utter anarchy. We need a delegation of Congress to make our laws and keep order, rather than the complete lack of control that we have now. A national government that is too strong means diminishing the rights of the people. Religious and economic freedoms is at the forefront of our newly found independence. Forming a strong federal government means waving those goodbye. I understand what you're trying to say, but you're just completely wrong. While the national government would have a lot of overhead, it would also be limited by a separation of powers a judicial branch to carry out fair trials, a legislative branch to make fair laws, and an executive branch to enforce said laws equally and fairly. Furthermore, there will be checks and balances to keep one branch from becoming too powerful. We have everything figured out. I'm sorry, but we can't possibly know that that will be the result under your form of government. Our nation functions as it should and should not be sullied by these frankly insane ideas that you propose. I am not willing to bet the integrity and prosperity of this nation on the whim of you Federalists. Mr. Adams, take for instance Shays' Rebellion. This massive revolt in Massachusetts demonstrated the complete inefficiency of our pact of friendship, and it only shows how we are worse off than we were under the British. A strong government is the only option to control things like this. We cannot keep living like this. Yeah, but every once in a while, a good rebellion is a good thing. It's as necessary as forms in the real world. They keep the freedom juices flowing. If you generally believe this, you are an idiot. This rebellion only shows how change absolutely must occur. They are not rebelling to keep the juice flowing. They are rebelling because the state government can't provide livable conditions on its own. These living conditions are the best we can do. Ratifying this constitution will only bring back the oppression of before, with massacres in Boston and taxes on everything. The only difference is that it will be Americans taxing Americans. How can you say that when we've never even tried it? According to your favorite philosopher, John Locke, the purpose of government is to protect people's rights, not take them away. This is a necessary risk we need to take for the betterment of everyone. I'm sorry, guys, but that is all the time we have today. So thank you all for listening in to the official United States podcast.